Good afternoon. My name is Paul Lehman, and as head of school, welcome to this 99th annual commencement of Eastern Mennonite High School, where we celebrate the lives and accomplishments of this year's senior class. On behalf of our faculty and staff, it is an honor to publicly welcome our soon-to-be graduates, their parents, and brothers and sisters, grandparents, friends, and all guests to this special event. Class members have guests who have traveled from 15 different states and seven other countries. From the West, relatives and friends have come from Arizona, Nebraska, and Texas. From the Midwest, Minnesota, Iowa, Missouri, Indiana, and Ohio. From the Southern states of Florida, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Tennessee, and from Maryland and Pennsylvania and Connecticut to the north. But we are especially happy for the commitment of family and guests who have traveled internationally from Canada, China, France, Kenya, Saudi Arabia, South Korea, and the United Kingdom. Thank you for making this incredible journey for those from far away. and to all of you for entrusting your students to Eastern Mennonite Schools care. Thank you for prioritizing today's celebration of God's faithfulness to the class of 2017. Your presence truly makes today extra special. This full auditorium is a powerful testimony of the love and support these 43 young adults enjoy as part of the Eastern Mennonite School family. Seniors today marks a significant rite of passage, the culmination of high school and the beginning of an unknown adventure in your new real world of college, service, and employment. Freedom and independence has been beckoning your name, and we believe in you. The range of emotions today, this weekend, reflect the integral part you are and will always be to this community. Thank you for being successful, positive leaders of EMS and enjoy the moments of today's celebration. At this time, I invite Rebecca Lichty, mother of Evan, to lead us in our prayer of invocation, followed by the singing of hymn number 521, Come Thou Fount. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day of celebration. We pray that you will be present today with these graduates. Let each one, O oh Lord, feel deeply your unending, unfailing love. Let them know your truth, that they might believe. Be their rock, their fortress, and their resting place. Lead and direct their many paths as they journey forth into new challenges and responsibilities. Be their strength, be their song. Let every beating heart here today, Lord, know that you have loved each of us with an everlasting love and that you were indeed pleased to make us your own. Keep us as the apple of your eye, hide us in the shadow of your wings. May our lives reflect your glory both today and forevermore. We ask these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Would you please take your blue hymnal, a worship book, and turn to number 521. And if you're able, I invite you to stand as we sing. Number 521, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
Our mission states, Eastern Mennonite School joins home and church in calling students to faith in Jesus Christ, academic excellence, personal integrity, and compassionate service in the world. This class mirrors the qualities of this mission when considering vocational aspirations. Within this class, many have publicly fixed their eyes on Jesus, and they are called to excellence and Christian service in all things. Members of this class will be pursuing societal leadership as a minister for girls, managers, and business leaders. We might have an art therapist, a number of teachers, a coffee house owner, a screenwriter, and a communication expert. Others are passionate about pursuing academics in preparation of providing care. Care as a nurse practitioner, physician, a veterinarian, a flight medic. Others are interested in serving as a park ranger, sailor, dental hygienist. We also have an aspiring opera singer, and I look forward to seeing her on Broadway. A contractor, accountant, an investor, publisher, IT and cybersecurity experts, and this class, as more than I remember of any other, has five engineers coming out of this group. The needs of us older generations will be tended well. Our seniors also know the importance of integrity, that part of our mission statement. And many, uh, some, some of these seniors were instrumental in selecting this year's chapel theme, Authentic Faith, which gets back to how do we be integrity, full of integrity on our faith. And I believe, seniors, you have been true to yourselves this year. You are playful and fun-loving in the heart. You are punny with silly words. For example, what do you call a baby monkey? A chimp off the old block. <laughs> and many of you are just that, and that's something to be proud of. More academically punny, what do you call Santa's elves? Subordinate clauses. <laughs> they learned that in English. But you are passionate about your relationships with one another. You are practiced in learning. You have prioritized growing your faith in sincere and deep ways. Class of 2017, I believe you have a moral sense of right and wrong and the tools for making differences wherever you go, and we are ready to give you flight and watch you soar. Xander Wagner and Ives Deng, as high achieving academic scholars of the class, have been asked to share a few student remarks on behalf of their class. Philosophical and deep thinkers, creative, articulate, and humorous communicators, Ives and Xander's dedication to academic pursuits have opened many windows for them. Get ready to learn something new. And I invite your congratulations to Ives and Xander as they come forward to share their remarks. Good afternoon, members of the board, family, friends, and faculty. Alexander and I are honored to represent the seniors during this commencement ceremony. I congratulate all of us for reaching this point. As we prepare for the next step in life, it is inevitable for us to read these questions. Who am I? Where did I come from? And where am I going? We are young men and women, high school graduating students right now. Some of us are rich with capital, some are rich with thoughts, some are rich with happiness, talents, and health. We are gifted with different identities and properties. In reaching this point, we have followed a recipe of sorts. We selected courses, adding up different flavors and ingredients to cook. Math and English are salt and pepper. Art is sugar, and PE is spicy chili. History is meat. Like a chef, we try to figure out recipes that fit best 
for a meal, to create a taste of future life. We learned the combinations of ingredients and spice at our high school by experimenting and communicating with others. However, the cons we learned from the textbook and even class, whether differential equation, oxidization, pottery, or Macbeth, or the history of ancient Greeks, will easily fade away as we finish the school life, as we concentrate on our specialties. And yet, we will remember the colorful persons, passionate teachers, loyal friends, wins and losses, a chapel inspiring us to explore authentic faith, a senior speech in May, a field trip to Cold Spring Harbor. We chew these memories and savor them. Even as we reflect upon this past meal, we're ready for the new feasts that await us. Just as here at EMS, we have had different recipes in our career. So too, we move toward new cuisines. And to answer the questions of where did I come from and where I am going, we may consider high school like the adventure of reaching the mysterious treasure island. As students, we met and accepted our companions in different ports, which were our clusters. We built up our ships and elected the captains, helmsmen. And with the information, the pieces of treasure map we gained from the old sailors at Wharf, we drifted out into the sea of life. Each ship had different roads, but its same destination. Finally, we landed at the beach, knocked our treasure map pieces together. We found that the hidden treasure is each other. We learned to create our ships starting with knowing nothing, to control our ships safely through storm, to peacefully coexist in the same environment, and to share the treasure map together. So we have succeeded. And maybe now it is time to announce that this adventure is over. And we are ready to begin a new one. Thanks. Thank you, Ives. Hope you all aren't tired of metaphors because I got one more coming. All right, I'm going to go in a little different direction and explore the geological aspects of our class. Somewhere along the course of our educational journeys, we all learned about rocks. We learned about the many forms rocks take, such as pebbles, boulders, stones, but more importantly, we were taught about the three primary types of rocks, sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic. What type of rock is our class? Are we igneous? Let's think. Did we burst forth from the core of our Mother Earth in a fiery explosion with a force of two 100 megatons of TNT, only to settle in an ashen cloud over the ill-fated city of Pompeii, and then crystallize over the eons into a porous, lightweight rock, ideal for the construction of bridges and domes? <laughs> no, are you kidding me? Of course we didn't. So, not igneous. Are we sedimentary? Sedimentary rocks are formed from tiny pieces of sand, shell, pebble, minerals, and other particles that stack on top of each other and cement together over the course of time. However, sedimentary rocks are often fragile and crumble easily. <clears throat> Many years ago when Mr. Martin and Mrs. Leonard's sixth grade class, the class of 2017 began its formation into a sedimentary rock. We were a bunch of different kids from a bunch of different places all thrown together, and we began to stack on top of each other. Metaphorically speaking, of course. <laughs> Each of us offered our own unique sediment and brought forth unique personalities, skills, cultural traits, and experiences to the table, even from places as far away as Kenya and Honduras. Every year, new students settled in with us, and some left us. By the time high school rolled around, we had cemented together as a class. We had learned how each of our individual skills and gifts contributed to the big picture. When a sedimentary rock is subjected to intense heat and pressure under the Earth's surface, it transforms into a denser, more robust, oftentimes swirly looking rock, full of crystals known as a metamorphic rock. Similarly, as we brave the torrents of high school, the extreme pressure from rigorous classes, keeping high grades, bouncing our extracurriculars with schoolwork, 
along with the intense heat of Miss Goucher's pottery kiln, compacted our easily crumbled sedimentary form, thus transitioning us into a beautiful, swirly, crystalline, metamorphic rock. What I'm trying to say is that all of you bring forth something to our class. All of you make it more interesting. All of you are loved and valued in the eyes of the, your peers and in God's eyes. Our class cannot function with just one person, because that, that wouldn't be class anymore, it would just be one person. And by definition, a class requires a collective of many individuals. No, we're not the most organized class, or financially stable, <laughs> or even most excited by fundraisers. But I think I speak for all of us when I say that these flaws can be completely attributed to the disappointment we all hold in our hearts for being the 99th graduating class <laughs> of EMS. Not the 100th. We envision a future where our class's accomplishments are overshadowed by the class of 2018's centennial status. But rest assured, class of one less than the 100 year anniversary, we will not be forgotten. We have left our mark in every corner of the school, from the music room to the student council, to the athletic fields and courts, and so much more. Our interests cover every imaginable range from singing, writing, playing basketball, karate, or even something as dumb as collecting antique padlocks. What a loser, right? That, that's me. I, I collect the old locks. But. Never stop pursuing your interests, even if people try to discourage you. The world needs more people like us. Show the world what it means to be a follower of Christ. Whatever direction you're heading next in life, whether it be college or service or work, please always remember this. All of you are loved tremendously by God and your peers, and all of you will forever be a key component of the class of 2017. Thank you. Thank you, Ives and Xander, for those well-crafted words and reminders of who you are as a class. It now gives me great honor to introduce two friends and former colleagues at EMS as this year's commencement speakers. In 2003, I arrived at EMS and quickly learned these two men were the institutional encyclopedia for me, invaluable human resources for the school. J. Ernest Martin, Ernie, as we've known him, served Eastern Mennonite High School for 34 years as assistant principal, director of curriculum and faculty development. Seniors, you will recognize his face as I think you were fifth graders maybe when he retired, uh, as the Mr. Martin that you walk by his photo many times every day there in the alumni hallway. Ernie has also taught two senior English courses, British and Western Literature, and an Honors Research Writing Seminar. Ernie has led workshops and seminars for both schools and congregations on able behaviors, emotional intelligence, and brain-based learning. Ernie served as high school educator for a total of 42 years, in, including time in Malawi, Central Africa. He earned a Master's of Arts in English from Catholic University of America, and a high school principal certification from James Madison University. Ernie and his wife, Judy, live in Rockingham County. They are parents of three adult children. Ernie retired from EMHS in June 2010. Sherman Eberly, his close counterpart, served at EMHS first as a director of church and community relations in the late 1980s and later returned in 1999 to serve as Dean of Students and then High School Principal until his retirement in 2012. Sherman received his undergraduate degree from Goshen College and Masters of Science in Education from the University of Akron. Sherman served with Mennonite Central Committee in Zambia, taught and coached at Central Christian High School in Ohio, Eastern Mennonite College, Malone University, and Eastern Mennonite High School. He is truly a versatile educator who connected extraordinarily well with students at all levels. Sherman is married to Ann Pfeiffer, a 1965 EMHS grad, and resides in North Parkview. They have two grown sons and four grandchildren. Sherman is a man on the go who enjoys golf, badminton, 
students don't take him on. Um, he's known to uh, whip many badminton contestants. He also enjoys traveling, hiking, and reading in his spare time. Join me in welcoming our dynamic duo, Ernie and Sherman, to the podium to share today's commencement address of words, actions, and future shaping. Following the address, we will proceed through the events as they are listed. Well, Mr. Everly, you know I'm an English major. Yes, I do. Yeah, but my math is still good enough to calculate that between the two of us, we have attended about 90 graduation ceremonies. But somehow, this one feels fraught with a good deal more anxiety. You know, Mr. Martin, I'm thinking the same thing. That may be why my heart rate is popping at about 25 more than normal right now. So do you think we can do this? Let's do this. Class of 2017, members of the board of directors, faculty, parents, grandparents, extended family and friends, we are deeply honored to participate in your graduation celebration. Sherman and I have been friends and later colleagues for many years. We both grew up in the Harrisonburg area, but we went to different churches and attended different schools. However, we made what turned out to be a lasting connection when we both served in the Mennonite Central Committee Teachers Abroad Program in Central Africa. Judy and I in Malawi and Ann and Sherman in Zambia. And while we were probably a thousand miles apart, Malawi and Zambia joined once a year for a week-long retreat, and that's where we began a lifelong friendship. Over the years, we played tennis together, and more recently, we have enjoyed golf. However, in retirement, we have noticed a few changes in our golfing experience. We have both moved forward a tee box or two, and now ride as much or more than we walk. We won't talk about slices and stuff like that. We give and receive an occasional mulligan and a give me putt. And we have actually come close a couple of times to shooting our ages. Of our combined 86 years in Christian education, we spent 49 at EMHS, uh, Ernie 34 and myself 15. For most of my 15 years, as you have heard from Principal Lehman, uh, head of school, Mr. Lehman, I served as Dean of Student Life and later two years as high school principal. Likely a number of you in the audience chatted with me a few times in my office or the hallways or at games. Maybe more than a chat was required occasionally. For his tenure, Mr. Martin served as assistant principal, academic dean, director of curriculum, senior English teacher. Probably some of you took Mr. Martin's Brit letter research writing classes. So class of 2017, as you well know, words pervade education. Your teachers and classes tested you regularly on your ability to understand increasingly complex sequences of words. And teachers required you to regularly create your own perceptive and thoughtful wording. At least I hope they did. Demonstrating minds engaged in evaluating, analyzing, drawing comparisons and critiquing Enduring skills, all of those are enduring skills that you will come to value for a lifetime. In the final analysis, teachers worked hard to require you to make every word count. On the other hand, our broader culture uses words beyond number, generally sloppily composed and sent via an electronic device. Far too many words are devoted to Facebook rants unfounded blogs, or potentially hurtful texts and tweets. And as participants in this electronic wizardry, we fast lose the unique human capacity to authentically greet each other, to read body language and facial expression. 
We adore our cell phones because they also function as cameras, calendars, computers, stereos, and alarm clocks. Unfortunately, while we are engrossed in our phones, we tend to ignore both the beauties of nature and actual human contact. Furthermore, and to our own peril, we forget that words possess a sacred function with the power to create or deeply wound. Seven times in Genesis 1, God uses words to create the glorious universe that we so take for granted sometimes. And then God said, let us make mankind in our image, male and female, he created them. God pronounced all of creation, including humans, very good. And then with the arrival of Jesus, the word became flesh and introduced a new kingdom vision. Through the Holy Spirit, Christ comes and dwells among and in us, often carefully using words to steer his followers, as you will shortly see. In 2003, Michael Mailer composed a song entitled, How Can We Be Silent? Uh, Shall we sing a few bars for the audience, Ernie? (laughs) Not me, but you can join everybody else later. Okay. Reflecting on the influences that shaped who we are or our futures, the refrain of the song includes, we will shape the future, we will not be silent. And we reflected a good deal on what has shaped our futures who have led us to be what we are today. Sherman and I realized that many of the most profound of these influences came via a combination of words and actions. For example, my seventh grade student teacher was a music major who firmly believed that singing ought to be experienced regularly not just during the assigned music class. So this student teacher began each day by calling the roll using the do-re-mi scale. For each student, the teacher would sing three notes, and the student was to respond by singing the next three notes. I was a pre-adolescent boy in seventh grade. Scared to death of being singled out in any way. To make matters worse, my voice was changing. For four to six weeks, I lived in fear of this morning ritual, developing stomach aches every morning. But of course, my parents made me go to school. And to this day, while I like to listen to music, I cannot bring myself to sing. One afternoon during my sophomore year, while I was sitting in the old snack shop on the edge of the EMC campus, more than likely enjoying a dip of ice cream on a Helen Hours donut, Eugene Hostetter, Uh, my PE prof and advisor approached me asking if I had chosen a major yet and what my interests were sort of becoming. He went on to suggest to me that he felt that I would make a good PE teacher and coach. He advised that I might consider transferring to Goshen College to pursue a physical education major since EMC did not have that major at that time. So, wow, that meant packing up and moving from the old stomping grounds for my wife, Ann, and me. Yeah, I know, married in my sophomore year of college. And you know what? In August, we celebrate 50 years. Thumbs up to Ann. The process of pulling up... The process of pulling up roots and relocating was not an easy one or a smooth one, but it certainly did shape our future and I trust was also future shaping for many students and athletes that I encountered in my subsequent 44 years of my profession. And in the spring of my junior year at Madison College, now JMU, Dr. Locke, my Shakespeare and Chaucer professor, asked me to stop by his office the next day. He's my favorite prof, partially because he extended mercy when justice was deserved. And it had to do with a Madison English department policy. Now imagine this, English department policy in those days that required profs to deduct a third of a letter grade for each misspelling. And there were not such things as spell checkers and stuff in those days. I wondered what Dr. Locke wanted with me. He began our conversation by asking me what I was going to do 
after I completed college. And while I was taking both English and education courses, the ed courses in case everything else failed, I told him that maybe I would write, but surely never teach. And he looked over his reading glasses at me and said, well, I think you would make an excellent teacher. In fact, I believe it so much that I am nominating you for a graduate fellowship to further prepare for teaching. So four years later, I was attending Catholic University of America, studying English as a Woodrow Wilson fellow and preparing to embark on a teaching career. Sometimes that voice that shapes the future can be unexpected and maybe even an unwelcome voice. In my case, it was Uncle Sam saying, I want you. Having a low number in the first round of the draft, not the NFL or the NBA, but the Vietnam draft, I chose as a conscientious objector to do alternative service with Mennonite Central Committee in Zambia. During that experience, our future was shaped in a variety of ways, none more stressful than at the birth of our first son when there were major medical problems with no apparent solution or medical expertise to do the required surgery. Overnight, God provided a miracle physician that certainly shaped the future of our son's life and ours. In the days that followed, the voice that we heard was nonverbal but needed, impactful, and soul-calming in the collection of prayers from friends and family. In the spring of 1972, I was wrapping up a master's degree at Catholic U. The department head had invited me to stay on, indicating that the university would renew my fellowship. But Judy and I were wondering what we should do. With three years in Central Africa and a year of grad school behind us, we were dead broke. So we thought maybe I ought to find a teaching job for a couple of years. One interview that I went to was with the superintendent of Rockingham County and the principal of Turner Ashby. I received a, a call that evening from a TA principal who told me I could have the English teaching job, but I had until 9 o'clock a.m. the next morning to let him know. I later found out this was a rather coveted position, and it was very tempting. But I wasn't sure I was ready to move back to the community where I grew up. So in the end, Judy and I agreed that I would tell him thank you, but we can't make this kind of decision in less than 24 hours. So for several weeks, we wondered if we had lost our brains and made a stupid decision. Then one evening, Sherman Everly, our friend from Central Africa, who happened to be teaching a Central Christian in Ohio, made it a significant future-shaping call. Sherm said Central desperately needed an English teacher for the next year, and one thing led to another, and I spent five years teaching English at Central, and for some of that time, directing curriculum development. In the spring of my fifth year at Central, Sam Weaver, principal of Eastern Mennonite High School, called, and 34 years later, I retired from EMH. Yes. And then there was the voice of my longtime friend, Ernie, that once again shaped my future. His call indicated that EMHS was adding an administrative position to Dean of Student Life. Did I have any interest? His voice was followed by a call from Les Helmuth, Director of Development, and soon after, a call from Principal J. David Yoder. It was like another, I want you, only this time, welcoming voices. I was not looking to leave Canton, Ohio and Malone University, enjoying teaching there in the health PE department and having some success coaching the men's soccer team. Another move, but it was coming back to the valley, home, where we knew we wanted to retire and the rest is history. A quick sidebar, one of the application requirements asked me to choose a metaphor to describe my philosophy of discipline, since a part of my responsibility was to keep the handbook updated and to be the disciplinarian. And I remember the uncertainty in my mind about the difference between a simile and a metaphor. It had been a long time since I'd studied that. <laughs> well, I assumed that as assistant principal, Ernie would be part of the interview process, and I did not want to be incorrect, of course, being aware of his English background and his expertise. So after checking with Webster, 
Google was not so available back then. I finally settled on No Man is an Island because I knew that I would be needing to pick Ernie's brain on student life issues and especially those complica complicated disciplinary decisions. Somewhere in the first couple of years, I acquired the nickname the Shermanator, and that stuck all the way through. <laughs> Graduating seniors, we challenge you to pay careful attention and to live in readiness to respond to those words and voices which could shape your futures and be future shaping for those whose lives you touch. We leave these stories showing how our futures were shaped and turn to Christ, the ultimate shaper of futures. First century Jews expected Christ to shape Israel's future by arriving as a conquering hero, annihilating the Romans, and establishing God's people as rulers of the nations. Instead, and in contrast to these expectations, Jesus called 12 disciples and roamed the countryside, shaping lives and futures by giving sight to the blind, enabling the lame to walk, curing leprosy, raising the dead, preaching good news to the poor, and often using provocative words to clarify God's kingdom vision. He refused to be silent, even in the midst of withering criticism and acute persecution. A few months ago, I attended an Oxford Circle Mennonite Church worship service in Philadelphia. Pastor Dow, who spoke at last year's EMS commencement, advised his parishioners to be rock catchers, not rock throwers. And Alexander, I think it doesn't matter what type of rock, you can catch them all. And this was a concept and wording which he took from the book Just Mercy, written by civil rights lawyer Brian Stevenson. Um, as you know, Facebook, Twitter, and other forms of social media have made rock throwing so very easy. Rocks of all types fly freely toward those who don't agree politically or religiously, or maybe just cheer for a different team. The all-pervading presence of social media allow us to respond to comments with rock-throwing free-for-alls, resulting in words that can seriously hurt and destroy. And regardless of the candidate you supported the most re in the most recent presidential election, that generated numerous rock-throwing examples, with very few of the participants practicing rock-catching. And in contrast, Christ models in John 8 a powerful kingdom rock catching, a model that he clearly expects his followers to regularly demonstrate and follow. A woman caught in adultery was brought before him by rigorous and arrogant church leaders who insisted that the humiliated woman stand in front of the group. The leaders having reminded Jesus that the law of Moses required such women to be stoned waited with bated breath for Jesus' response. Ignoring them, he just bends down and writes in the dust. When the church leaders continue with persistent questioning, Jesus finally says, let him without sin cast the first stone. The church leaders depart one by one, and Jesus tells the woman to go and sin no more. An incredible example of the power of a few thoughtful, and well-chosen words to deflect anger, pride, and hateful judgment while gently and mercifully shaping a future. We seem that extending a gentle and merciful response in our own relationships creates a very timely model for the combative and restless culture in which we find ourselves today. Class of 2017, by what you say, and do, will shape numerous futures, whether you mean to or not. Future shaping of one kind or another potentially lies in every interaction you have with another person. Dave Beckler, one of your teachers, athletic director, boys basketball coach, and a faculty devotional some time ago, read a poem that has stuck with me for quite a while. It's Which Are You by Ella Wheeler Wilcox features two kinds of people. One sort, by what they say and do, lift people up. The other sort, by what they say and do, 
lean on people and become burdensome. And Catholic monk and theologian Thomas Merton very perceptively proposes that the best you can do is write something or say something that will serve as an occasion for another person to realize what God desires. In other words, shaping futures. And we're rather certain that he envisioned personal notes and face-to-face communication rather than electronic devices. So, graduating class of 2017, you have a sacred task. One you cannot avoid. But while you will shape others' futures, you do have choices in how you shape those futures. So in our parting challenge, we remind each of you to shape futures by cultivating rock catching in your words and actions. By practicing in your words and actions, lifting rather than leaning. And in your words and actions, extending mercy rather than judgment. And in the words of a challenging Francescan prayer, may God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. And may God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. And from Isaiah 11, as you leave this place, and embark on new beginnings. May the spirit of the Lord rest on you, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and power, and may a loving reverence for your Lord and your neighbor guide each of your steps as you shape futures. Thank you. invite you to take your green Sing the Journey songbook and turn to number 61, How Can We Be Silent? And also invite you to stand as we sing and then remain standing for the song that follows. Green hymnal number 61, and we'll be singing the first verse and the third verse. Number 
118. Praise God from you. In a few moments, I will recognize the academic achievement of a number of seniors. However, I also want to recognize the growth and gifted behaviors that all of our seniors have demonstrated. In their journey together, whether long or short, they have spurred each other on, academically and spiritually. In the classroom, on the playing field, or on stage, they have honed their skills, including the ability to think critically and deeply, to ponder the big picture, and to pay attention to small details. What has impressed me most about the class of 2017 is their deep com compassion and connection to others, displayed in so many ways. Today we recognize their academic achievement with a diploma, but ultimately, time will give them a chance to truly see all the lessons they have learned in their time at Eastern Mennonite School. The class of 2017 plans in the coming year to work, serve globally, and attend a variety of colleges and universities including the following, the American University of Paris, Anderson University, Belmont University, Blue Ridge Community College, Bridgewater College, Eastern Mennonite University, Franklin and Marshall College, Gordon College, Goshen College, Heston College, James Madison University, Messiah College, Rochester Institute of Technology, University of Alabama, University of California, San Diego, University of Georgia, University of Miami, University of Virginia, University of Waterloo, Vanderbilt University, Virginia Commonwealth University, and Virginia Tech. A number of students will start work this summer, and a couple students will serve the following organizations as they take a gap year, Adventures in Mission and Service Adventure. We wish each one God's blessings as they depart for the next phase of their journey. 43 seniors graduate this afternoon. 28 of them have earned a 3.5 grade point average or above, qualifying them for honors recognition, a level of academic excellence that requires consistent dedication in all of their high school coursework. Of the 28, seven are seniors earn between a 3.5 and a 3.749, six earn between 3.75 and 3.99, and 15 earn a 4.0 or higher. To achieve such honors, these students needed to choose throughout their high school career to pursue the most rigorous courses that EMS has to offer, and for a number of them to complete coursework at the university level. Some of these students sat, sat for advanced placement exams early in May, some taking two or even three exams. 11 seniors earned an Honor Scholar Award by competing, completing specific criteria set by the academic departments. 
We are also honored to have two commended National Merit Scholars and one National Merit Finalist. Clearly, this class has demonstrated academic excellence throughout their time as EMS students. First, I will recognize those students graduating cum laude with honors. In grades 9 through 12, these students earned a grade point average between 3.5 and 3.749. I will name all the students alphabetically, not in the order of rank. Each student should stand when his or her name is called and remain standing until all graduating cum laude are identified. Please hold your applause until all are standing. Craig Anders. Megan Grantier. Mariana Martinez. Martin McDonald. Lucas Petersheim. Micah Riddle. Vesta Jang. Congratulations. In the second honor category are those students graduating magna cum laude with high honors. These students each earned grade point averages between 3.75 and 3.99. Again, I will recognize them alphabetically and please hold your applause until all are standing. Anderson Gordon. Aaron Lehman. Rebecca Lagoff. Evan Lichty. Katie Melendez, Lauren Weaver, congratulations. The final honor category recognizes those students graduating summa cum laude with highest honors. These students each earned a grade point average of 4.0 or above which is possible to earn because honors, AP, and university courses receive a weighted grade. Again, please hold your applause until all are standing. Grace Brega. Rachel Brenneman. Yevon Choi. Ives Ding. Max Driver. Gabriella Forward. Leah Hoyard. Ira Miller, Ellie Pence, Elijah Powell, Carissa Souter, Joseph Sykes, sorry, <laughs> Daniel Senegra, Alexander Wagner, and Lucas Winger. Congratulations. There are two final awards to present, that of valedictorian and salutatorian. These designations demonstrate the steadfast commitment to academic excellence, which is one part of our school mission. Our salutatorian for the class of 2017 is Elijah Powell. Please come forward, Elijah. And our valedictorian for the class of 2017 is Alexander Wagner. Will the class of 2017 please stand? By the authority vested in me by the Board of Directors of Eastern Mennonite School and in accordance with the standards established by the Mennonite Education Agency, 
the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, the Virginia Association of Independent Schools, and the Commonwealth of Virginia, I now confer upon you the right and privilege to receive this high school diploma. You may be seated. Prior to the presentation of diplomas, I would like to take this opportunity to ask for your help in preserving the dignity of commencement by refraining from whistling or applauding for any one student. Your congratulations will best be shown by applause with gusto for all of the graduates after the last diploma has been awarded. Senior class advisors, Mr. Timothy Brenneman, Mrs. Jody Hertzler, and Mrs. Shannon Roth will now present the class and Mr. Philip Landis, our secondary school principal, will award diplomas in the order listed in your program. Malik Muhammad Alali. Craig Taylor Anders. <laughs> Jonathan Christian Anderson, Jr. <laughs> Evan Wyatt Bollinger. Grace Abigail Brega. Rachel Renee Brenneman. Cameron Lee Byer. Yevin Choi. See you, Dung. Maxwell Woodrow Driver. Gabriella Louise Forward. Anderson James Gordon. Megan Campbell Grantier. John King Hall. <laughs> Christian Carlton Hayes. Leah Drew Huff. Leah Nadine Hoyer. Adam Christopher Jacob. <laughs> Angela Nina Kovalenko. Aaron Grace Lehman.
Rebecca Camille Stoltzus Lagoff. Evan James Lichty. Mariana Martinez Hernandez. Martin James McDonald. Catalina Esperanza Melendez. Ira Dean Miller. <laughs> Karen Rebecca Moore Miller. Elizabeth Nicole Pence. <laughs> Lucas Anthony Petersheim. Elijah Kendall Powell. <laughs> Crandall Dries Rafferty. <laughs> Bailey Gerhard Reimer. Micah John Riddle. Carissa May Souter. Joseph Kenneth Sites. Daniel James Senegra. Dylan Paul Slayball Brubaker. Pa Michael Stemple. <laughs> Alexander Lynn Wagner. E. E. Wong. Lauren Elizabeth Weaver. Lucas John Wanger. Yuhawan Vesta Chang. So I don't know if you've noticed these 
sometimes small items that we've been handing Mr. Landis as we come up. Some of them are puzzles, some of them are toys, science-related things, just things to play with. But they're all gifts for our beloved chemistry and physics teacher and senior class sponsor, Mr. Tim Brenneman, who is retiring from EMHS with us. Wait, wait, hold on. Anyone who has ever had Mr. Brenneman for a class or as a senior class sponsor, please stand. These are all the lives you've touched with your teaching. Thank you again, Mr. Brenneman. And graduates, to symbolize your commencement to new experiences, new opportunities, and new responsibilities, you may move your tassels from right to left, and let's give it up for our graduates. We are proud of you. And as you take another step of independence by graduating from EMHS, please remember that God needs your idealism to work on critical issues facing our world. As future leaders in communities near and far, ground your decisions on the teachings of Jesus Christ. Continually be a student of life, always learning, always seeking to make your community and world a better place. You have learned God's vision for your future during your days at EMHS, and again today. My dream is for your heart and head to guide your life in relationship with Jesus. This weekend was full of graduation celebrations and parting, parties one after another. You love being with each other. Leave this trace of love, God's love, wherever you go. None of us know where God may lead you, but in following his lead there is full confidence in your unlimited influence for tomorrow. May you be the one who blesses the Lord your God. May you bless your neighbor, and may you be the heart of God wherever you live. Finally, graduates, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about and do such things. Whatever you have learned or received from Eastern Mennonite High School, put those things into practice. May your heart and life be filled with the fruit of right living that comes from being committed to the teachings of Jesus, and may the God of peace be with you. Live long and prosper God's call on your life. Lauren Weaver. The class business manager will present the class gift to Mrs. Kathleen Roth, the chair of the EMS Board of Directors. Lauren and Mrs. Roth. When the senior class officers were notified that it was time to start the process of picking a gift, we hit a pretty big brick wall. Upon looking at our financial statement, we realized that we were $30 in debt. <laughs> But, thanks to the hard work of admissions and our class <laughs> parents, we were able to pull together and raise $2,300. So as, a, as the business manager, on behalf of the class of 2017, um, I'm happy to announce that outdoor furniture will be purchased for the area outside of the art hallway at school. Um, Lauren, parents, and the class of 2017, on behalf of the board of directors of Eastern Mennonite School, and the entire EMS community. We want to thank you for this outdoor furniture. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you to everyone who has helped make this commencement weekend special, members of the class of 2017, parents, and each who has had a part in the program activities, and to all of you who have joined us for this time of celebration. Special thank you to Eastern Mennonite University, which has generously staffed and made these facilities available to us, and also for recording this event. The class of 2017 initiates a new pattern this year of selecting a special hymn and verse to represent their class. You will find their song, Be Thou My Vision, hymn number 545, and scripture, Deuteronomy 31.8, on the top right of your program. The class will sing verse 1 together and invites you to join in for verses 2 through 5. Once the graduates are gathered for the song, we will pause for a minute or two for those of you who would like to take pictures of the entire class standing together. Following the singing of the class song, we invite the gentlemen to remove their caps in preparation for a prayer of blessing on behalf of our board of directors from Mrs. Teresa Anders, who is also the mother of Craig. We will then conclude with the faculty's tradition of singing a benedictory blessing over the class of 2017. Please remain seated for the prayer of blessing, benediction, and the recessional until the faculty and graduates have left the auditorium, at which time you are dismissed. We additionally request that parents be given priority in exiting the auditorium so they can join their graduates out on the front lawn. At this time, I invite the class of 2017 to come forward for photos, the class song, prayer of blessing, and the benediction. Again, thank you for joining us for this special occasion today.
It is an honor on behalf of the EMS Board of Directors to offer this prayer of blessing over the class of 2017. Please join me in this benediction, which is adapted from the first chapter of 2 Timothy. Let us pray. As you go from here, may God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord give you grace, mercy, and peace. Do not let your faith or your witness grow cold. Remember, God's gift of faith is like a flame. When the embers of that flame have cooled, you must fan them again to keep them ablaze. So remember what you have been taught and what you have experienced. Live in such a way that all who know you may see the light of God reflected in you. And may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you and among you in the days ahead. Amen.